Hello everybody and welcome back to the SRG stream. Today we have a massive game, first game of the season for Eastern Wizards and SRG Zircon. I am here with my co-caster Kerim today. Hello, once again. Uh, I haven't had to be back here for this time for the first match of CSD the challenge series Denmark is back ladies and gentlemen this time around of course with the Zircon playing against Eastern Wizards most people likely the SRG fans given that you know it's kind of our stream welcome all people all races stuff like that hopefully we're gonna have a fun I mean, we've already been thrown straight into the um, champion select here, and just quickly go over: Are any of these bands surprising to you at all? Ooh, so uh, one of the more interesting bands when I actually look at all of them is actually the Ezreal from Eastern Wizards, of course, faithful someone that can pick that champion up. You don't necessarily tend to ban it if you are going for something of an aggressive laning phase, or rather, uh, if you just want to you know, try and force those these yourself. The Pike is the responding man on the other hand. Someone like Noxie can play that. A player who is from the Czech ERL, in fact, although he is a Danish player. So already Zirkin is trying to inhibit the aggressive potential from Eastern Wizards just a tiny bit and looking to pick up some snowball of their own as they lock in the Jace as their first pick, even though they are on the red side. So they're given that counter pick or well, counter pick, power pick, should I say. Yeah, you know, we've had a look over these teams. These are some of like, you know, high ELO teams and stuff like that. We're expecting some good, I mean, a good level of play. Like, this is the kind of level which these teams are probably going to try and compete to maybe get into something of the standard of, uh, you know, the UKLC along that lines and the national leagues. Essentially. I mean, you could say that, of course, of the uh, one of the mid tier teams. Uh, competitions in Denmark. I think we can say that. No flame yeah, attack, definitely. of course. So, uh, these teams battling for that spot. I'm actually unsure how last but went because I wasn't following it that much. I have to apologize. However, what I will be following closely is this draft phase as it is starting to occur in front of us. Grag is the second pick for Zek, meaning that we can be possibly expecting it in that jungle department. Technically a flex pick, although we haven't seen its way over to the bot lane nor the mid lane that much. So, they're just going for a powerful 2v2 in that top lane. Jason Grag is a lot of early game damage as well as mid game if they manage to snowball their lead accordingly so going to be interesting how they fare in the early game it's actually in my opinion quite interesting to see the kaiser being picked up it seems eastern words as a kind of already looking to try and focus around that kaiser and trying to push to the point where that kaiser is strong enough to carry throughout the team you know with javan and maokai are both very very strong champions to actually be able to protect an ADC or just someone on their team. Um, what kind of supports or, you know, what kind of mid laners do you think we're going to be seeing from Eastern? So before this game started, I had one question about what are Eastern Wizards actually going to be playing through? Is it going to be the mid lane or is it going to be bot lane? Uh, you can technically also put in a snowball champion like a Kled into the top lane, but already they have answered us, all right, we're not going to be playing through the bot lane, which is why I'm not expecting a high octane support to be picked something like a nautilus is still a uh, relatively strong but you're not going for pure aggression there you're going to be mostly relying on getting those leads through uh, i'm sorry i'm gonna butcher this like and then <laughs> that's my best assumption that it's how that's pronounced but this guy is a player who can play some despite him having quite good success on like an or and he Lemon and Cruz on that Jarvan to set up a lot of these early game kills in that lane alone. So I am expecting heavy priority to be on that mid lane pick, given that they are not getting a counter pick as they are on the blue side. It'll just make some sense to get themselves some aggression at least so that they don't lose on all lanes. Yeah, very true. And actually, something which I would like to point out is that Azir might actually be left open by the end of this draft, which would... Oh, never mind. It was it was over. The dream was there for a second. I do like to see ah. some Azir play, but, you know, we're not seeing it today. Obviously, yeah. Azir and Corky being really strong in the meta now, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And I'm actually glad that it's Zerk and banning both of them out. I mean, that's a power move, really. Of course, they're trying to limit Legend. And as I said, he was going to be the most focal point of Eastern Wizards' lineup. However, right now, that Draven being hovered scared me for a 
a second there. Instead, they're going to be relying on this Ash. Now, formerly, this is an AD carry that used to play heavily into the late game with super good scaling, a lot of auto, uh, auto attack speed, but now she is a 40% CDR at two items monster, just spamming her W. So they're just going purely for early game aggression. These guys are not going to be looking to scale. Yeah, and you know, honestly, it's it's a nice little contrast to see, oh, there's the Nautilus you mentioned, yeah, but just quickly fair. touch on that, you know, but it's a nice contrast to see the sort of like, you know, early game heavy sort of damage, you know, control in this early game, and then, you know, a bit of more slow play. It's going to be a bit of a contrast. It is going to be a little bit of a contrast. That Nautilus pick is going to be the pick allowing Eastern Wizards to be going for a lot of these mid-game skirmishes as soon as their main carries unlock a couple of those items. Most importantly, that Kaisa and Orianna, of course. However, I am going to be keeping my eyes on essentially all lanes because you have good engage from Zirkin as well. You have the Gragas who can force these plays very early on and he is going to have the damage to back himself up with that Jace as well as the Ash and Braum who provide so much lockdown in that bot lane, especially into someone like a Kai'Sa and Nautilus. If you catch these two guys out, there is no way that they're running away from you. And so there is the snowball button and it's all... All going to fall down draft. draft. Yeah, it was a, and it was a, a um, placeholder, I believe. Yes, it, it li likely was. I mean, hey. We have seen Annie in the top tier region in the world, right? I mean, you know, it's at least but, that that's a meme. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, actually, we did see, like you mentioned, the Ash Brawl, and I'm just saying, yeah, two glacials. What is it? Twenty five percent <sighs> chance to stun. All right, you know what? Joke. You know what? You, you've likely been playing way too much TFT, and this has like been the thing that every single caster that I've casted with over the course of the past couple of months has said whenever two glaciers have been locked in, and it's hilarious, absolutely hilarious. I'm really glad whenever anyone mentions that. But it's yeah. my first cast in like you know two months. Yeah. I've not made that joke yet. I felt like I needed to make it at okay. least once. Yeah, you get a pass. You get a pass. So we're gonna be running through these. Uh, this. These. No. This. Pick and ban phase. Once again, we're gonna see what the placeholder was actually supposed to be. Two, both teams just banning champions from A, which is lovely. Saves time. A couple of precious seconds, right? Um, now, when it comes to what lanes we're going to be actually focusing on, I do have to point out that you have amazing engage and lockdown potential in the bot lane, but it's mostly going to be sitting in that top. I am going to be expecting. Still assault to be getting at least some advantages accumulating on top of this Maokai. If that isn't happening, if this Jace isn't pushing heavily or trying to freeze the wave to incur at least some sort of impediment onto that Maokai, I'm going to start being worried as we now see that the placeholder was likely a zone for motionless. Ooh. That's going to be interesting. I like that. It's a nice pick. It's a really nice pick, actually, Zoe. Oh, yeah. It's one of those things which is like... I don't know. It's something... I don't see enough in my solo queue game, so when I see it in competitive games, I'm like, ooh. See, I'm coming off uh, of a community where yesterday I was casting uh, their game and Pentakill, so it's gonna be, you know, my pers my perception might be skewed a tiny bit, but Zoe is definitely a champion who can make these big flashy plays. Uh, and it's like an Orianna, she doesn't necessarily have to feel incredibly threatened to instantly however the thing that we have extremely immobile especially for flash up and when playing into someone like a jarvan she doesn't get the option to be picking a cleanse because you cannot cleanse away from being airborne right i am expecting lemon cruise to ditch all other lanes and just focus hard on this mid lane clap emotionless there make sure that zoe doesn't get to play the game because if she does and if she manages to hit late game zoe with relatively good tempo it's gonna start to hurt to Eastern Wizards. Yeah, you are definitely not wrong there, but I do think that Wormil or Murmi in the top lane, sorry, will, you know, he will need a bit of that help because Jace is such a lane bully, especially when it's this sort of matchup with, you know, a melee sort of tank versus Jace. It kind of makes the tank's life hell. So I do think a bit of the pressure, like you mentioned earlier, will be onto the top lane. That's why we are going to see a few things happen. You're hoping to get, oh, not hoping, but you were seeing to get. Um, still stole this lead, but do you think Lemon Cruz is just going to let that happen, or do you think Lemon Cruz might try and interfere a lot more in the top lane? 
See, I think that essentially you can give the top lane up and just play around the bot side most of the time because I, I said that it's likely going to be Lemon Crew's trying to inhibit Emotionless in the mid lane, but he can also play around bot lane. Nautilus is famous for setting up his ganks, especially post level 6 where he can just point and click anyone and he can just set up a very, very easy crowd control chain. So he can be playing around those two lanes. Around top lane, if still Silsol is extremely overextended, he can roam there and he can try and relieve some of the pressure. But this game, I think that it's going to be Vermi kind of being the sponge for all of the damage and hurt that is going to be attacked upon uh no what what's the proper terminology <laughs> damn it i am bad at english apparently yeah, regardless man, so all the damage yes he's gonna be soaking up all the damage and hopefully not dying too much and that's something also interesting that we can look at can a Hermie do that because sure we can determine how good players are by how flashy their mechanics can they also soak up the pressure? That is a very, very important skill of a top laner. Yeah, definitely. You know, and especially at this point in the game, a lot of people have been finding of saying that, you know, top planes, this bit of an island. We actually saw, you know, G2 versus Vitality. We saw we saw a Garen pick in the top lane, which uh, didn't, we didn't go incredibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. And no. um, it's one of those things where I think in the top lane at the moment, my like you were talking about earlier, just be the sort of damage soak, but that, you know, seeing the Jace up there makes me think that they might try and make a few plays around that top side, maybe go for the Rift Held and go for an early top push. Yeah, that's also possible. I mean, Gragas has, like, his world is an oyster, essentially, because, okay, my pen just fell down my desk, <laughs> cool. But, regardless, uh, as I said, that Lemon Cruise can go to any lane outside of top lane to get a very easy gank off. Gragas can do the same, but except with every single other lane. Now, it is going to be a bit more difficult for him to have anything happen in the bot lane than it would be for Lemon Cruise to do there, just because they don't have such an easy setup. Most of the crowd control is going to be coming from level 6s of Brom and Ash, so... If you see Gragas roaming around the bot side, don't necessarily expect him to be there too often, mostly after the ultis are hit. And before that, as you said, sit on the top lane. Make sure that you get all of those juicy, juicy turret plays, possibly go for a Herald, as you said, and just, you know, try and bully Vermi a lot, because then you can snowball, you can get the side lane pressure, and you can control the game just through a very, very powerful 1 and 4 combo. Yeah, you know what, and we are heading into this game soon, 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 and I would like to ask the chat, if you think Eastern Wizards are going to win, please put hashtag EW in, and if you think that SRG is going to win, please put hashtag SRG win into the chat, just so we can get to where this chat stands, so, so we know who to not be lenient towards, basically is what we're saying. Okay, are you asking for literally the chat? bias right now nah. is that what kind of a caster you are nah. is this what you have become in the couple of months come on <laughs> nah nah not at all Prom promise i promise i promise but actually you know legend and on that oriana you mentioned a little bit earlier that is a signature champ mm -hmm. um have we seen legend and who Honestly, I would start pulling stuff out of my ass, but um, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to pretend that I saw too much of Legend, and I remember him playing a couple of times, and I do remember him, his Aurelia. But outside of that, not much. It's a little bit of a blank slate. I apologize, chat. I apologize, all the Eastern Wizards fans. I know that I probably lost, like, 10 followers on Twitter from that. But, you know, it's it's not it's really not my specialty. I haven't cast to the Danish scene for... No, I mean... The day of the break while we've been um, exchanging from split to split, but here we are, jumping straight into the game, and there's a pause! I was just about to call it. Oh, hey. oh I was so close to... Let's say, are we going to get a... I mean, hey. hey. Without pauses, then it's a bad grassroots league because, you know... A coffee shop right like not starbucks or something like that but just like some home and you see you know a fingernail in your in your coffee like the experience no, like no, no. you kind of have to ingest i mean <laughs> okay um right maybe right. not okay so i think uh, okay no let's just stop what? let's just let, let, let's just okay 
I'm sorry. Ingesting fingernails has just gone straight through me, and I can feel chills down my spine now. I mean, I would say you're a wuss, right? But I mean, I kind of have to try and preserve your integrity. Um, <laughs> so, um, eight lovely, lovely. Part. I look, think. to make it through impeded because it's all going to be sitting on the set plays up ultimately it's going to be on this jar lemon to have at least alleviate some sort of just set Completely, and you can start going for the skirt. Despite them having the stronger power spikes earlier, we have to remember Ash now spiked on two items. Zoe kind of spikes on one and then spikes throughout the entirety of the game, so <laughs> it's difficult to pinpoint that one. And if it's gonna be Vilkan playing an AP group, that's also going to be curious. I mean, much. Oh, he's got a turn, but it's probably I mean, generally, you actually tend to go for Predator Gragas just because you can go uh, a full side. What's it called? A full side clear uh, of your jungle. Then you back for boots, you pick him up, and go ganking. Probably whoever. So that's like a big uh, strategy here for our lovely Gragas. I actually don't remember the last time that I've seen an Aftershock Gragas be played in the jungle, now that you mention it. Jesus Christ. It's been a while. The, the new runes reforged have just screwed everything up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. The runes change is really messed You know, when it had to choose... It was a lot more chill. Like, yeah. loads of mastery pages, but now you only have two pages, so in pin select and you're finally... We go just resuming. Oh, yeah, we're in this here from maybe the uh, it's actually possible that both sides can go for an invade here because you do have quite a lot of CC riddled throughout both of these compositions. Of course, as you said, Nautilus with that hook can set a lot of these plays up, follow it up with someone like the Maokai. On the other hand, Zirkan can go for something as well. Braum, very, very good at setting up these invades just because of his passive, you can get the CC down on several members of the enemy team. And looks like Zirkan, they're going to be doing exactly that. As Eastern Wizards, they spread apart in a horizontal line. Are they going for that invade? Is it, is it, has it been seen? They're walking in the bush a bit late, they don't know it's how. No, it actually hasn't been spotted yet. Oh, this is so sneaky, I love this. Oh my god, this is like, like, fanatic kind of style, oh. right? I mean, oh no. Someone's Here we are. Out uh, today. And there he is. There's the Arcane Comet, the slow going back onto oh. Le on Lemon Cruise. Lemon Cruise is trying to get away. It definitely looks like he's going to be able to stay away safe from that one, but the early sweepers are able to pick up one CS. Fascinating. <laughs> I know. Al already the perfect start for this Ash. Okay. Jeez. Okay, and starting off strong. What we're seeing. Oh, do you think that we're going to see any jungler sort of conflict, maybe? Maybe any fights between the two junglers at this, any point with this? Okay. Okay, well, I think we've lost Karim. That's a bit weird. Okay, so it seems I believe I've lost Karen here. Um, I'll try a solo cast in the meantime. But um, what I was asking Karen was if I see any conflicts between the two junglers. And I'm not really sure if it's going to happen, but hence I asked Karen. But we are seeing the Conqueror coming out from the Javan and not the Electrocute, which makes me think he's going for that more tanky build, maybe a bit more of a skirmishes here and there. Um, I think now we might be seeing a bit of poke coming in from this Ash. The Arcane Comet is being quite, well, it's quite popular on Ash, and I believe some people are actually going Triforce as well. And the Arcane Comet works really, really well in the lane. There goes Karen. He's gone. He's left the call. He's out. He's finished. 
But um, like I was saying, you know, we see we're seeing a lot of comments being taken on Ash because that poke with the W is absolutely incredible. You know. And there we go, there's an engage straight onto Faithful. Faithful's getting quite low, but there's a Braum Shield blocking a lot of the damage. Isabel try Elabel trying to run away here. Is gonna get rooted and taking very low sneezes. Very low sneezes gonna fall down. First blood to Faithful. And there we go. Also, Noxie is gonna pick up a kill onto Elbel. Faithful might fall down here as well. Faithful, very low HP, forced to use the flash to get away there. TP still available for both bot laners, but an incredible engage. Faithful picking up first blood and one kill going on to Noxie. And a small engage now into the top lane. Wormy trying to get some damage out. Actually going to win that trade against Sysol, but Sysol going back in onto that fight. He starts to run low on Matter. The Ninja are attacking him. Sysol's getting quite low. Wormy trying to force that, but is going to get knocked away. And not much is really going to come from that. But welcome back, Karim. Ah. Uh. Someone doesn't want me to be casting video games apparently tonight because my PC froze and crashed. I apologize, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Oh, but there we go. Wilkan is coming in. He's going to get the stun onto Noxie. Noxie's also going to get slowed as well. Red buff boom, doing some damage. Almost a stun. Sneezy's left alone and is able to get away. But Lemon Crew's in the top lane doing some damage to Sysol here as well. Sysol trying to trade back the damage. Lemon Crew's running away, but he's running into a big minion wave. He's going to get taken a bit low. Wormy and Lemon Crew's actually losing out on that trade in the top lane. Already but, um, yeah. Yeah, have, have, you, you, oh, have you reconnected to the game? Can you see what's I going on? I have reconnected, yes. <laughs> a lot of trading okay. and a lot of skirmishing already happening. Kind of, it's, it's the Zircon who seems to be getting out on top right now. Wormy is in a little and bit of a we, curious position. Here. Yeah, you know, it's getting quite low. Sysol is getting very low. Wormy's going to try and chase him down. It's going to get flashed, and then we're going to get taken to the mid lane. Legend Den taking a bit of damage. You do see Sysol in the top lane. Um, well, still, Sol is going to be able to get away with the flash, and he's probably, oh well, yeah, he's now gone back to the base. Yeah, I really like myself a little bit of a fiesta every now and then. Already, so much fighting coming through from both sides, just trying to snowball themselves to oblivion. Of course, trading one for one in terms of kills. However, given that Sol managed to get a good TP there, it just means that he's going to be always able to cancel Maokai's recall. So right now, Vermil is in a tough situation where he is likely going to be giving up at least a couple of creeps, some experience. So it does play into the hand of Sol. Yeah, Sizzle is, is already up on those minions by a, a, well, actually a decent amount for this point in the game, but Wormy using that TPT at the top lane to try and make sure he isn't missing too much there. We're seeing a bit of poke coming out from these mid laners, and it seems more in the side. Oh, there we go, and engage Wormy getting kicked under the tower, actually, is going to get taken down to half HP. Salsol is also getting a little bit low, but that corrupting part is allowing him to stay in this fight for ages. Wormy's getting low. Salsol is going to have to walk out of that, though, the big, big minion wave. And we are actually able to get out there just fine. It does manage to get out of there, at least for now. But I think that we have to point out one big thing here, and that's that Silasol has cut the man. See, Wormy gets jumped on top of him. There we go. Wormy jumped on. And there's Wilkem. The slow coming on to Wormy. Wormy's getting quite low. And there's the kill. Oh, oh, where are they going to get it? Sasol's getting a bit low, he's healing, he's living, and there we go. Wormy is going to fall down to Silasol in the top lane there. You know what, I'm surprised he died, but also surprised he lived for that long at the same time. Yeah, I mean, they didn't actually have vision on top of him. They had just the, uh, what's he called, the oracle, just trying to sweep and so let them know where his position was. But they couldn't spot him precisely, and so Jace couldn't auto-attack him, so they had to run into that brush. Didn't seem that Remy could turn it around, but it at least was a, a tiny bit of a, of a tense oh. moment for the top lane and jungle for Zerk. Oh, we're in the bot lane. Noxie jumping straight onto Elabel. Elabel's going to get taken very low. There's Noxie with the second kill of the game. Now jumping onto Faithful. Faithful's trying to get away from this one. Noxie's getting taken quite low. But the flash EQ from Lemon Cruise is going to be able to secure the kill for Sneezy in this bot lane. A wonderful amount of damage coming there from Eastern Wizards. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. As now, the side of Wizards pick up two easy kills for themselves. One of them heading into the pockets of Sneezy and the other one into the hands of this lovely Noxie playing this Nautilus. And that's the power that you get when you lock in that Nautilus. Remember, this guy is originally supposed to be a top lane champion, which means that he has quite a lot of base stats to help him out with the laning phase, and he also has a ridiculous amount of crowd control paired up with someone like a Kai'Sa as well as a Jarvan in the early game, and you can just burst the enemy bot lane with no issues whatsoever. They're very true, and you know what? I think actually right now, even though the gold 
is, is basically the same. I think it's probably in the side of Eastern Wizards, in my opinion, because the bot lane is really where you want all the all the action to be good going. But here we go. Wormy is actually able to get away from the gank here. Ooh, well, going a bit saucy for that bit of tower shot there. I was trying to go for something there, at least try and deal a bit more damage to Vermi. Doesn't manage to find anything in the end, and so right now, he hasn't precisely been finding too much, too many plays. Uh, there was with that one gank in the top end which resulted in the kill, but not much else. So, Lemon Cruise so far having a little bit of a bigger impact, as you were talking about who is having the pressure from all of this gold accumulated across the board. I would kind of agree that right now it's Eastern Wizards in the lead. Uh, just because that bot lane advantage is going to be pretty significant as it comes down to those two kills sitting on the Nautilus. Now, oh, as I speak, so small so engage Wormy actually doing a lot of damage onto Silsol, but Silsol is able to return more. And, you know, Wormy's very low now. He's getting quite low, but as you were saying. No, that's it. <laughs> oh, okay, you finished. It's, okay, it, it's, yeah. fi it's fine, yeah. We're seeing a lot of trades happen from Silsol and Wormy, and it does mean that Wormy is always for forced under his own turret, and whenever he doesn't have a TP, it means that he's likely to be losing these creeps on hook. It's from Nautilus. Ooh, but yeah, there we go. Elbel is going to get hit, but the shield's going to stop him from taking too much damage, but a nicely placed Kaiser W is able to connect. And you know what? That's actually that's actually kind of annoying for Elbel, because Elbel being taken to half HP means that with this four-man bot, the turret dive is very, very viable, but they are looking like they might actually try and push for the tower here, but we might be seeing some return damage from Fateful and Elbel. It looks like it is just going to get backed off here. I really like the map movements from Eastern Wizards right now. They're saying, all right, we're going to be trying to find some leads. We're not playing just for scaling, we're playing for snowball as well. They're trying to snowball this Kaisa to Oblivion. Giving her two of those third plates is going to be crucial. Now, Wilkan is sitting oh, in that Oh, yeah, brush. that was a really nice little orb check there, actually. Wilkan is going to get taken very low. Here we go, there's Nazi jumping in, and Wilkan... Is going to take it down already. Yeah, a bit too overeager, I think, for my own taste, this Gragas. Well, sitting in the enemy jungle with no vision coverage to spot all the other members of Eastern Wizards moving in, and so he pays for it with his life. So I actually am receiving a, a lot of lag on my end, so I cannot keep up with what's going on in the game right now, so you might just need to take over for a hot second. Yeah, as you're speaking, there is a quite a big fight happening in the bot lane. Elbow is trying to run after Sneezy, does manage to flash away as Faithful picks up that first kill. Jarvan is there to try and give some aid to the bot lane of Eastern Wizards. Now focusing Faithful, he's just trying to kite away. With the amount of CC, it's going to be difficult for Bronze to do anything, but now Lemon Cruz picks up the double kill. Gragas is in that bot lane as well, and what the hell is going on? That's a big skirmish in the top lane. Okay, what the... I'm a color caster. I cannot do this. Eastern Wizards are just picking up kills all across the board. Trading 1 for 4, I believe that was. Or 1 for 3. Okay, it's not that bad. <laughs> well, I, re I, I returned um, just to see the end of that fight with um, them picking up the kill onto the Gragas. We are seeing a TP from Vermi into the top lane. No, nothing's really going to happen there. Um, hey, however, I still the sold. Yeah, I missed all the fun. Like, it's, <laughs> it's unfair. It's unfair. My, my internet not being very nice to me today, but you know, still has got that 35 CS lead um, quite early on, you know. This, this, this isn't really... Well, this is what we were expecting, but this is really not what I think Eastern Wizards wanted from this top lane. I know they were trying to leave it, but it just means Vermi is going to be very low on gold when it comes to this roaming and this team fighting. Yeah, you're definitely right in that regard, but you don't necessarily need to have your tank as in a healthy state as you would be in uh, concerned about this Jace. So right now, Zircon, they're going to be very happy with where Jace is positioned in terms of gold. However, it's not going to be the biggest impediment for the side of Eastern Wizard. They're going to be happy with all the kills in the bot lane and mid lane. Trying to contest this dragon, nothing's going to come of it just yet. Yeah, there we go. Now, both teams having an infernal each, but there is about 600 gold in the favor right now. Oh, is it Zerdex? Zer Zerkin. Zerkin. There you go. I know Zer <laughs> something. That's I forgot it. for a second. That, that wasn't me. That never happened. It's, it's fine. We appreciate you nonetheless, Miwa. That's, it, it's a wholesome community that we have here. But uh, <laughs> as we were already speaking of the gold being accumulated in the top lane, Rifterald has been now picked up by the side of Eastern Wizards, however. So while well, Silsol is still managing to pick up all these third places in the top lane, and play happens in the bot lane. Oh, there we go. Elbel is going to be able to get the massive 
knock up onto Sneezy, but not really much is able to happen. Noxy is using the depth charge to try and keep them off it, but Vermi, oh, Vermi taking the turret shot. Sneezy taken very low, actually. Might not be able to fight this one. He is far too low to go on this. Vilken jumping in, but he's got no mana. Wormy's going to get taken a bit low, but there we go. Noxy going in for the Q. But Elbel is going to get taken, oh, blown up, actually, but we are also seeing the TP in from Silsol. Silsol jumping onto Vermi, but there is the Herald in the mid lane as well, taking on on two emotions and motionless using the flash oh, to get away from that one. Oh, but there's oh there's the huge play the shutdown onto a motionless and there we go noxy is getting taken a little bit low as well but there's the pick amazing kill on to sil and there we go faithful falling down as well the mid tower also gonna perish in this massacre that's happened all across the map and right now, SRG Zircon, they're just not playing coordinated at all. They fell prey to Noxy on that Nautilus, just catching them out one by one. They didn't fight a 3v3, instead they find a couple of 1v3s. And as a result of that, Eastern Wizards are able to pick up so many kills in the bot lane. They're able to pick up that tier 1 turret in that bot lane as well. In the meantime, Lemon Cruz and Legend, then they were sitting in the mid lane with the Rift held propped and ready. They utilized it, slayed emotionless and well you know the story from there and now the map is looking very exposed with a 3k gold lead for eastern wizards it went from a 600 deficit to now a 3k gold lead in yeah. the master of what a minute it got to that absolutely incredible eastern wizards really turning the tides of that game completely even though we thought you know they were a little bit ahead now they're just uh, really assured that lead and now they're really hitting home in this game Right now, it's going to start being a little bit more difficult for the side of SRG Zirkin to actually try and do something. They really need to wait for this Ash to hit that Triforce, because after that point, they can just keep on wave clearing and they keep on trying to poke the enemy down. They have enough engage to let Emotionless shine on this Zoe at this point in the game, and they can start grouping together, and they have to do that soon before Sneezy hits late game Kai'Sa kind of damage output, because as soon as that happens, you're not winning those fights. Yeah, you know, very, very true. We are actually seeing, you know, Vermi hasn't been able to keep in that uh, keep up in that CS at all because of those fights that have been going on. We are seeing Silsol now and Emotionless on a huge amount of minions now. Uh, and it really is just kind of showing that these, you know, two, I guess you'd say almost carries might just be strong enough to try and stop Eastern Wizards from getting that Kaiser to a point where she's just unstoppable. Yeah, however, for that Kaisa to be unlocked, we still have some roads to go, so it's not all over. It's, all, no, it's not all over, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's Soul Soul and Emotionless need to, be, need to be there. They need to get those kills onto the Kaisa because those are the people that I think will be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. Emotionless right now needs to play the perfect Zoe game, essentially. He has to play perfectly from Fog of War, but Eastern Wizards are doing everything in their power to try and limit that. Look at the amount of vision coverage that they have splintered throughout the entire enemy jungle. So many control wards just trying to secure themselves the amount of push against this Zoe, because that's her power. She's gonna pop you from beyond on the wall and you have to respect it so the amount of vision is much more crucial than in any other game that you would normally be seeing yeah no very true I mean, you know, it is just a fight for vision realistically and we are seeing you know a stop on the back from lemon cruise or from from el bell onto lemon cruise and i think right now they're just trying to stall for maybe a little bit of time trying to clear all these wards and just play the game really safe at the moment which i don't know is if it's, that's exactly what they want to do what's your thoughts i mean right now they can kind of play passively as i said they're still waiting on some of the power spikes to be coming through for them. Uh, once again, we have to keep our eyes on Emotionless, how aggressively he plays, because that is going to be setting the tempo for essentially both teams. And he can play aggressively, but he still has to pay attention to all of the engage that is on Eastern Wizards. You have Lemon Cruise and you have Noxie. Those are the big two members that you have to be terrified of if you're Zoe, because especially now, Emotionless doesn't have a flash. So every time he gets caught out, he just dies and pops immediately. Yeah, we have now seen the Gwinsus now onto Sneezy, which means Sneezy is going to start doing more and more damage, and especially, you know, this coal has been fully stacked as well, and it's just, it's looking like Sneezy's slowly but surely getting, well, slowly getting faster at reaching this final build. Well, not final build, but reaching this big power spike of damage. He's definitely trying to get there. I mean, he's 
going to get there with the tempo that is right now in this game. And the big thing that we have to keep our eyes on is Baron buff as soon as it spawns, because I am actually uncertain if Eastern Wizards win that one, so if they decide to go for it immediately as soon as it spawns, it might be a little bit of an int, depending on if it's a 50-50 <laughs> or a 30-70, you know? Right now, it seems that they're just trying to still keep pressure around this vision department in that topside jungle. Perhaps... Absolutely uh, looking for a pick. Yeah, definitely looking for a pick. They have to engage to try and get those leads, and... Props to Zirkin. They're just saying, all right, we know that you guys are trying to do something around that jungle. We're going to play it safe. We're just going to clear the vision and let the side of Faithful just pick up all of these CS, all of these creeps, because he needs to be this carry that hits that power spike very early because he needs to be able to counter this uh, Kai'Sa. Not Zaya, Kai'Sa. Yeah, you know, very true. This fight for CS at this point is... It's more or less just going even, I'd say maybe even in the favor of Eastern Wizards. So not looking too good here, but we might be seeing a fight break out. We are seeing the teams are quite close to each other now. And hands reach, really. Sneezy does get hit by the Brom Q, not much followed up on afterwards, however. And so now Sneezy, he still is going to be a really big talking point for Eastern Wizard, but I also want to focus on Legendon because he's sitting on 155 CS and two kills. He does have the Ludens Echo finished and he's building. Oh, but there we go. There's a the death charge onto Elbel. Elbel's going to get absolutely blown up right before being able to use the Glacial Fissure, is it? I'll go ahead and say yes. Glacial Fissure. Wow. Yes, you're right. And. The funny thing about this Braum, right, because he's now sitting on an unfortunate score of 0 and 5, he doesn't actually have the resistance to be trying to withstand the amount of burst damage that is sitting on Eastern Wizards. And I say that. Oh, Silsol Sil getting absolutely destroyed. Even Wil Vilkan tried to you know, throw in the, um, the ult there, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't, wasn't enough. The canister. Not yet. Canister. The I forgot the name cask. of it. Yeah, the cask. cask. Explosive cask. Yes, there we go. See, I'm a good play-by-play, -play, as we have seen <laughs> already today. Uh, but right now, Baron Buff is going to be spawning in right now. And so, the Baron Dance is going to begin. However, the problem for the side of Zirkin is that they cannot precisely contest Eastern Wizards. Because when you look at the amount of damage that they have, there is no real consistent damage to be trying to combat the amount of tanks that Eastern Wizards actually have in a proper ba ba front to back 5v5 team fight. You have to chunk through Nautilus, Jarvan, and Maokai to actually get to the backline of Oriana and Kais, and that is just not a situation that Zirkin can put themselves in. They have to find picks, they have to catch Sinesi or Legend and out. We have to be seeing plays from Emotionless. We have to be seeing crucial uh, Ash Ultimates. Yes, damn it. And if that doesn't happen, I just do not see a universe where Zirkin can win a fight. Yeah, yeah, Zirkin, they're in a really tough spot right now, but I still believe, I still have the belief in them to pull back this game. You know, like you were saying earlier, Emotionless playing the perfect Zoe definitely could bring them straight back into this game. Oh, yeah. But right now, they've actually, I think, made a quite an aggressive push forward towards this Baron to try and stop EW from going for a Baron, you know, so easily. Uh, so they know, well, they actually didn't see Sneezy, so... They are just trying to contest that vision in that top side. Curious what the reasoning for it was, given that they cannot precisely push, because even though this Kaisa isn't there right now, jumping on top of Vermi. Yo, okay, there oh, we sorry. go. Vermi yeah. jumping on to Silsa and Sneezy just. Yeah, Sneezy's blowing people up at this point, but I think they've now Zerka have realized that there's two bot. They might be able to make something, but they yeah. are going to actually back off, and there's not really going to be a fight that's taking place. Yeah, they hadn't seen Sneezy there. I mean, he ulted from across the almost entire lane into the face of Silsol, so it was difficult to spot him out, and he just bursted him down immediately. And here's the thing that I said about Maokai being terrifyingly behind. It doesn't matter for Eastern Wizards, just because the rest of their carries got actually ahead very early on. So this Maokai, he's still going to be tacky. He isn't nearly as behind as someone like a Brom, so he's still going to be functioning as that frontline, as that CC chain ridden bot. That's the Maokai is, and he just utilized all of his tools that he needed to get that kill. 
Yeah, and there we go. Another dragon going down into the side of Eastern Wizards. And yeah, I do see Silsol. He's alone in the bot lane again. They could really just try and go for the same thing here. You know, try and pick off Silsol and then maybe try and push around to the Baron and force some sort of fight. Yeah, Eastern Wizards, however, do in the end back off, just leaving Maokai sitting in that lane. So nothing going to happen, at least just yet. Now, what is the next step going to be for Eastern Wizards? Because the Baron buff is actually open and they have split push enough, I think. They also managed to secure the Mountain Drake. So right now, if they decide to go for a fight, I once again, as I said, they do not really have a too bad of a chance to actually win it out. They still have to be careful of Zoe because, as I said, if they do not have the perfect vision around this Baron pit, this Zoe can wreak havoc. And so, despite them being so far ahead, they still have to be pretty careful of SRG Zirkin. Yeah, very, very true, actually. And you know, they're actually, they're getting quite close to this Baron. You know, they're getting a good amount of vision actually around it, in my opinion, for how, like, strong Easter Wizards are right now. They're being quite sneaky and putting some wards around here, but there's a Drowsy and no damage is actually going to get put out. No damage just yet. The control ward is mm -hmm. sitting in that Baron buff. Zirkin, they're just waiting for it to begin to try and contest it. No vision there from Eastern Wizards, so... It looks Baron... like a fight's gonna happen. Looking like it, expecting Noxie to just... Okay, he doesn't have flash up, so no flash point blank engages. So does decide to go in on top of Maokai. Yeah. No response. Now, Vermi's getting taken a bit low. Silsol's actually... You know, he's pumping out a lot of damage. He's kiting quite well, but there we go. Oh, Eastern Wizards blowing up that Baron so fast with that Mountain Drake, and now they're going to start looking to do some heavy, heavy pushing. But there we go. Silsol maybe trying to take Vermi out of the fight, but nope, is going to disengage on that one. Yeah, so given that you do have that Mountain Drake as well as a Kai side, was just... It took no time at all for Eastern Wizards to secure themselves this Baron buff. Sneezy just managed to blow it up immediately. And now Eastern Wizards, they're playing the clean game. They're getting everything that they could want. Noxie does decide Ooh, to engage on top of the There's the Jace. depth charge yeah, onto Silsol. Silsol using the flash to get out over the wall. Then nothing really else happening, actually. Uh, just, oh, but there's the engage. Legend dead getting pushed away. Sneezy's on the front line, though. Sneezy's going to have to get out of there. That's a huge amount of damage using the flash to try and get away. Uh, oh, just... Just surviving on a small amount of HP there. You know, oh, Lemon Crew is looking for a play. Really, right now, Zirkin are actually playing this very, very well. Vermi's getting engaged on the bot lane. Silsol is getting a bit of damage, but there goes the tower in the bot lane. Getting one tower, but losing a lot of health. Uh, it's desperation from SRG Zirkin right now. They realize that they have to try and defend these inhibitors, or the game is over for them. So they decide to engage. They know that they can still win these fights, especially if they chunk Sneezy as they did right now. They get the perfect amount of damage on top of Kaisa, and while they do not manage to burst it down, at least they buy themselves some more time to at least keep these turrets out alive, and if not, you know, try and win this game, at least prolong it. Yeah. It's yeah, cynical. yeah. It's cynical. I believe in them, though. I still have the belief in Zerkin to pull back this game and maybe ca catch that epic victory royale. But, you know... We are actually seeing, though, a big, big difference in terms of ranks. But, you know, e you know, Eastern Wizards are taking this very, very well, even though, you know, the side of... Is it, no, wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zerk can actually have, you know, the higher ranked players, but Eastern Wizards have that synergy. We saw them last season as well. And even though their rank start might be as high, their skill is just as good, if not better. Yeah, in these team pl in these team based games, I guess of League of Legends, it, the individual skill doesn't necessarily matter as much as it would be in somewhere like solo queue. So all of these teams, if you have the synergy, you can replace a lot of the mechanical missteps as Jace gets jumped oh, on. Oh, there we go. Still Soul's going to get jumped on and absolutely burst down Sneezy, picking up the kill. But Lemon Cruise is going to pop a perfectly timed stopwatch there just to survive the incoming queue from Emotionless. Oh, that's a pick. 
that's once again Zerk gonna have to play the perfect game around the vision right now and it's just so difficult because there is so much engage on the side of eastern wizards now you can, can jump on top of your lemon cruise can jump on top of your yeah, there's, the there's the elbow jumping straight onto legend and sneezy however is pumping out so much damage and he's playing around this really really well lemon cruise jumping onto faithful faithful's gonna get using the stopwatch there and they go emotionless and faithful are just sitting ducks and that's a triple kill can we make it a quadrant no but there's a triple kill and the ace for eastern wizards and they're gonna be able to finish out this game and this was just a very very clean game from eastern wizards they realized their win conditions they utilized lemon cruise effectively there is that extra kill onto social or no he doesn't actually manage to fall that's wonderful some bonus ducks to srg zirkin right now but just a clean snowball from eastern wizards and i am a bit worried if i have to be honest moving into the second game because if the side of SRG Zirkin don't ban out Nautilus, I think they're just trolling the draft phase. Yeah, I mean, that was that was very well played from Eastern Wizards. You said it was a clean game. That was a very clean game. You know, even two of the what, Legend Dead and Lemon Crews ending the game with zero deaths each, you know. That's something that you don't often actually see. You know, like it's it, it's just very well played, very well played around the map, around the Baron, around the bot lane, everywhere. And a really, really good job, in my opinion, to Lemon Cruise for it. I think you know pulling away, pulling away these leads and getting some of those good picks. Oh yeah, Lemon Cruise definitely played a huge part in Eastern Wizards' success, and I think everyone else played very, very well. However, if you look at the damage graph, unsure if you guys can see it on stream right now. Well, okay, you can't. Well. I mean, Sneezy just dealt all of the damage. I think there is no big surprise there. However, it was almost wasn't more than Sosol. So on the other hand, Sosol played also well from SRG Zirkin. And I think we can expect that to happen in the second game as well. Try and give all of the resources to the top lane of SRG Zirkin. And try and find uh, more leads than this game. Because clearly, it just wasn't enough. Yeah, we will be seeing that in the next game. I think we're going to take a short break now, I believe, and we will see you before the next game, or just before the next game. See you guys in a bit. Hello everybody and welcome back 
to the second game of Eastern Wizards versus SRG Zerka. This is obviously the second game. If you weren't here for the first game, it was a very good game in the side of Eastern Wizards, and they ended up winning. I'm here with my co-caster, which you haven't, which if you haven't seen already, is Mr. Karim himself. Yeah, I don't think they've seen me, but most likely heard me. But hey, I'm, I'm willing to let that slide. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We well, were in a very short break. I think it was just like two minutes at max, but that doesn't matter. Hopefully the teams are going to be ready soon as we are now waiting in this lobby. And, you know, I really hope that the second one is going to be a bit more competitive because what we saw in the first one was a very very clean domination from eastern wizards lemon cruise was just all over the map jumping from lane to lane snowballing the bot lane with the utilization of noxy's nautilus sneezy got incredibly fed on a kaisa and after that point there was no point of return from srg zirkin so we kind of have to expect either a difference in a draft where you try and put more agency on the bot lane or we just have to expect Wilken to try and step up because let's be honest he got outshined a tiny bit by the opposing jungler yeah i know just just a tiny bit but yeah. we are <laughs> um yeah we are going into a new game new draft teams know a little bit more about each other than i think Zerka are going to put a bit more of a fight into this game. You know, we see it in a lot of teams where they go from, you know, kind of passive. The first game's a bit of a, a smash in one direction, but then every game after that is just a dominate from the other team. Yeah, we've seen it before, and maybe, just maybe, we'll see it again. It's possible. I mean, I have hope for SRG Zerkan right now. I'm also hoping that... Eastern Wizards are going to show us the same performance as first game because it was a joy to watch. It wasn't like just some random outplays. It wasn't just like the players being mechanically better than their opponents. In fact, Wilken was losing out hard in the top lane. All of the lanes went as expected, but in the end, it was Eastern Wizards' better coordination and function as a team that helped them shine and get the victory in that first game. So hopefully that can be something that they can show us in this second game as well. I mean, we kind of just have to see as we now are waiting for the teams to confirm that they're ready. I think they get around uh, a 10 minute break. I'm unsure about the rules. I would have to have that confirmed by someone. But yeah, for now, we are awaiting. They get 10 minutes and we get like two. I think so. I mean, hey, in most of the leagues that I've casted, it's, if, uh, it's been 10 minutes that they can pick up. They don't necessarily have to. Right now, we're seeing that Eastern Wizards are in fact ready. So it's wonderful. And the side of SRG are as well so they don't actually decide to pick it's thank you guys sincerely a, a tired caster <laughs> <laughs> thank you sincerely mr karen yes. also i want to know that i will refer you as mr karen from now on how come um i don't know you've you, you've gained the respect and you've gained the the um what's it called uh, the name of Sir, like Sir okay. Karim, Mr. Karim, you know, sort of. I have gained knighthood, you're saying. Yeah, there we go, knighthood of, All right. um, of the Miwa casts. You know what, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll take it. Hopefully someone else can also gain knighthood in this game by showing us their mechanical prowess as well as just overall a very, very nice League of Legends. Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally into this draft draftees for the second game of this evening be between SRG Zirkin and Eastern Wizards. Very similar bands being run. Back once again, Eastern Wizards banning Ezreal, Morgana, and Sejuani. So, no differentiation there. Jarvan banned away from Lemon Cruise, however, from the side of SRG Zirkin. A very welcome change, given his performance in the first game. Yeah, you know, the Jarvan was absolutely incredible, but ooh, still so locking in the Aurelia. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. I really like that one. Is it going to be actually going into that top lane or is it going to be mid lane? That is my question because I know that Emotionless can play uh, something of that sort. Some uh, He's mostly an assassin player, which is why I wasn't precisely expecting him to be locking in that Zoe. But still, he performed relatively well. Now, hopefully on an Aurelia, we still have to see where it goes. It's a flex pick. On the other hand, there are no flex picks from and they're saying, all right, Guys, we managed to beat you in the early game with a scaling comp. This time, we're gonna stomp you in the ground with focus on early game itself. Yumi Lucian locked in, and a, and then 
incredibly annoying lane to play into if you know Yumi, and an incredibly volatile one if you know Lucian. Yeah, honestly, Yumi is what I've been climbing with recently. I've had about an 80% win rate, almost plat. You know, it's, it, it's a solid one. I love it so much. It's like, and at the same time, is that what's brilliant about it is even if you're not good at positioning, as long as your ADC is, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, essentially. However, the big difference that is going to be in this game compared to the last one is that you're actually giving up the Nautilus for Noxie, and he had an amazing performance. He was largely the big reason why Eastern Wizards were able to accumulate so much of a goal lead so early on. And right now, you're not going to be having that support in that role. You're going to have a poke-oriented support that is good at team fights, rather than actually setting up those plays themselves. So right now, we're expecting that Lemon Cruz does decide to go for something very engage-oriented. I am expecting perhaps something like a Zek or even a Rek'Sai would be a good decision, in my opinion, right now into this, because they need to find that C initial CC somewhere. You know, and there's the Akali ban. We saw that on the last shaft as well, actually. And why is Akali being banned? Who She's is the even. Akali player? Oh. <laughs> that was else. a very fast response. <laughs> yeah, she's incredibly annoying to play against. I play her myself, so I would know, right? I mean, she did receive a change last patch where they actually upped her Q ratio, and as a result of nerfing her W, which now is actually reveals her when, uh, which it, how did they actually specify? It? They changed the, they changed the status the extra invisibility to just invisibility so now she actually gets revealed by stuff like rengar ulti so they thought that was going to be a bit of a nerf to her i thought so as well but alas it doesn't do jack to her because she's incredibly annoying so that's why they took her off the board ban away the strong champions man <laughs> But we have seen Corky actually locked in, which was banned last year after Zir is still available though. So I want to see the Zir play here, but the Silas being picked into the side I... of Eastern Wizards. You know what? I don't want to see an Azir play right here because Jesus Christ, that is such a boring lane to watch. It's been everywhere. Azir Corky, it's the biggest meta thing right now because you get so much shove, you get so much team fighting prowess. But I just want to see some explosive fights like last time around. Right now, what we have securing that is going to be the Aurelia and the Hecarim to top it all off. Zircon once again getting themselves a very potent in into their ranks, running it back with the Ash. So. Once again, a lot of burst in a composition and perhaps more of a late game guarantee with this Aurelia than someone like a Jace. Yeah, and the hover there's the Vladimir pick as well. Vladimir's late game can also be absolutely destructive. And you know what? I actually I actually like the comp a lot. However, I've got one issue. Yeah. Everything's the sort of same color scheme except Vladimir. Oh, come and I don't know about you, but it, it hurts a little bit. Shen is going to be locked in as the last pick. <laughs> no, never mind. Okay, they ran back. They, they ruined my joke. Okay, cool. Uh, you know what? About the colors... I don't know. I don't, I don't precisely care about champion colors, if I'm completely honest. I am not uh, precisely a color aficionado, you could say. <laughs> uh, but like someone like you, I suppose. But right now, we see that Urgata was the last pick to be locked in for Eastern Wizards. It's going to be playing either in Tenorino Rally or of Vladimir. We have to wait for the 22nd mark to know which champion is actually going where, and overall, I really like the Eastern Wizards composition because now they also get elements of early game to kind of complement it with late game. They have the Corky for powerful mid, mid game and late game spikes, and they have the front line in the case of Urgot, as well as Silas essentially as he reaches late game. And he also has some nice old piece to steal, uh, like that Ash Arrow, like the Glacial Fisher from Braum, so hey, Right now, Eastern Wizards, they kind of gain everything that they wanted, but I am going to be keeping my eyes on Lemon Cruise because we still have to get one question answered. Is he going to be as effective on Silas as he was on Jarvan? They're two very, very different champions. One yeah. sort of like an AP burst mage, the other one's more of an AD bruiser, almost tank. So like, this is, if Lemon Cruise performs on both these champions, he's going to be an absolutely petrifying jungler for the whole split, I think. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> and when we focus <laughs> on other avenues of the uh, 
of the draft phase. They're kind of going for a very similar style, except they have more snowball potential now in the mid lane. They're not necessarily going to be trying to snowball this Vladimir into an Urgot matchup with the Hecarim, because sure, they have some damage, but relatively, it, uh, it should be a relatively easy laning phase for Urgot to try and sustain himself and run away whenever he sees this, this giant glowing horse or whatever. So I'm expecting Wilkin to be running around that mid lane, try and get this Corky down, even though he is incredibly difficult to lock down so it's going to be a very tough game for Wilkin because he doesn't have too much setup anywhere especially pre-level 6 after that he has the ash arrow he has the glacial fissure but before that he really has to have that prowess to shine yeah very true and actually i'm looking at the team comes now i've noticed something which we kind of saw in the last game but, you know, it, it was kind of glanced over, but we're seeing a bit more tankiness in the side of Zerk of this game, unlike it was last game. You know, we're seeing, you know, Braum, you guys are obviously tanky. Aurelio goes more of like a half tank. Hecarim can go quite tanky, and Vladimir gets a bit of a high HP. Oh, yeah. But really, the only person we're seeing which is going to be building a lot of tank, or any tank at all, would be Ergo and a bit of Silas. Yeah, and it, it, I think it will in fact suffice just because you're not precisely going for late game team fights with Eastern Wizards composition, you're just going for mid game skirmishes. Uh, mostly because you're going to have Lucian and Corky, whom, if you manage to snowball accordingly, is going to be incredibly, incredibly annoying in any kind of team fight. But you can try and go late game, but I wouldn't re necessarily recommend it into Zerkin because they still have the Ash. I'm actually going to be curious to see if right now Faithful is going to be building the Essence Reaver into Triforce build, or if he actually is going to be sticking to Lethal Tempo and just going attack speed as well as on hit, because that was the former Ash build, and it got kind of ditched, but in this case, if they're going for pure late game, getting that sufficient AD carry in the backline would be very beneficial for Zircon if that is what they want to do. Yeah, and you know... The, also, Hecarim, I've seen a lot of Hecarims, this is a complete, this is just a lead question. I've seen a lot of Hecarims take Ignite and Smite. Um, not necessarily in pro play, because I've not seen a lot of Hecarims in high competitive games. That's mm -hmm. also because I might not watch a lot of competitive games, but, <laughs> you know, I, I see a lot of Hecarims, uh, mainly just in solo queue, taking Ignite. Is that viable, or is Ghost the better one? Because I've seen Ghost being taken here, I'm now I'm just a bit confused. No, it's definitely viable. You can lock it yourself if you want to mostly be one of you wanting the enemy jungler. You take the ghost if you want, you know, the the enemy opponent, uh, the opponents to not run away from you. It does help you just to try and keep yourself on uh, the enemy's tail. And if you actually look at the runes as we enter the game, he is running a conqueror instead of a predator. So right now that. That ghost actually suffices as a replacement for that rune because you would be getting move spin otherwise. So in this side, get a lot of good trades. He won't receive a pause this time, and I think we're good. Are we? There we go. Or is my PC going to crash like last time? <laughs> That wouldn't be cool. That, that would not be epic. But anyway, we are, we are actually maybe seeing an invade onto this bottom side here. Yeah. Do you think anything's going to happen? Or do you think gonna... Nah, actually, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, it's more possible from the side of SRG Zirkin because, once again, they do have the Braum. There is no hard CC at level 1 for Eastern Wizard. As, okay, I heard a Master Emote, and I do not know where that was, but someone was flashed Aurelia. a Master Okay, that's fair. I respect that. I respect that. But... No invades happening just yet. Probably not for the remainder of the first minute, but right now, looks like Eastern Wizards are just trying to get some poke down. This is fun if you're Yumi. I mean, he's already get, got two of the Qs down, get some gold for the Spell Thieves Edge, so, I mean, a nice start, I suppose. Uh, I'll, take, I'll take 22 gold star again. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, remarkable, but... I mean, it's like Ezreal, isn't it? You know, when Ezreal's... Yeah. ...they get one slice sack of gold and then instantly go back to the base for two white health bars. Oh yeah, I mean... <laughs> if you see a Yumi running Kleptomancy, I think she's just inting, but you know what? I have seen worse, I think. No, I've seen... I've seen, um... Re Kleptomancy Rakan full of... Oh. Yeah, I mean... 
There, yeah, there is worse. <laughs> there is definitely worse builds. For example, Twisted Fate in the jungle. But now we have to focus on the game itself. Ready, Emotionless is just jumping on top of Legend then. And I think this is going to be the name of this lane. Because right now, in the first couple of levels, Emotionless can try and contest his Corky a bit. But as soon as Legend gets access to his spray, well... There isn't likely much that this Aurelia can do in terms of wave clear to try and inhibit this lovely Corky sitting in a plane. So there is the potential for a burst, but Emotionless isn't actually running an Ignite, but rather a TP. So that is uh, diminished a tiny bit. Yeah, and here we are. You know, I feel like this the bot lane of Sneezy and Noxy is going to be very oppressive because obviously, even though we saw Faithful with the Arcane Comet on Ash being able to sort of you know, deal a lot of damage because of the W, um, I feel like literally just a mixture of Yumi's you know, auto attacks and Qs and a mixture of Lucian's Qs as well might be able to actually get you know the sort of aggression they need, but it's just going to take the ward, though. Yeah, uh, Wilkin is just going to be popping into that bot lane. Once again, he does have that set up there. Post level 6, not much before that one. So right now, he's just running around like a headless horse, trying to find something to do. And as we look at the CS department, it's absolutely even on all sides of the board. So nice little communism happening there from both sides. I don't necessarily expect a lot of CS discrepancies to happen in this game as in the bot lane you said that the bot lane obviously was it's going to be oppressive but given ash's range she can still at least wave clear and at least get those creeps and she doesn't necessarily have a terrible wave clear under her turret either so as long as faithful manages to pick up those creeps there he should be good yeah, also another thing which um another question is uh silas jungle um i see usually silas is in the mid lane in the top lane has been playing jungle recently a lot uh, it actually hasn't, and that is for one reason. They actually they nerfed him a tiny bit, and they changed his shield that he now gets off of his E to just be around magic damage. I have to shut myself up as Silsol is... Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think anything's really going to happen, but Silsol is able to do a decent amount of damage onto Wormy, even though he did get flipped into the tower there. Surprising, but go on. Already Wormy trying to get some good traits onto this Vladimir. Uh, to return to my point about Silas, they changed his shield so it now only shoots. Okay, oh, never mind. The Inkers going, going, going for the flash. E Silver Soul is going to get taken very low. And first blood. There we go. Going in the side of Eastern Wizards. You know, reminding me of last. An out of nowhere play and first blood just being dropped and a very nice flash actually in the top end there. Well played yeah, recent was yeah, it was a really nice flash for Vermi. As I said, he is likely to have a, an easy laning phase into this Vladimir. And with this one kill, it's just going to be that much easier. Already on the first back, he manages to get executioner's calling, which is just disgusting if you're the Vladimir player in regard because now you're not going to be healing at all and Urgot is just going to be able to trade on top of you every single time with success. Look at that. This is just yeah. fun, isn't it? And also, you know, when Silsol now decides to go for that heal, it's not even healing him for that much because yeah. of it. So, yeah, Vermi has got an absolutely beautiful start to this lane, but Mr. Cuso is actually going to miss some damage there. Might have almost been enough damage to go for the kill. But here we are, we are seeing again, Vermi jumping straight onto Silsol. Silsol's going to get a bit lower, but Vermi's going to get lower. Vermi's going to get taken down by Vilken. Vilken picking up a kill into the top lane there, and securing a little bit of CS for Silsol, but I can imagine Vermi's going to be running back there very fast. Yeah, Vermi does manage to get the perfect start to that lane, but it doesn't matter as he gets too cocky, doesn't respect the fact that Vilken can be on that side of the map, and he gets jumped on top of by two members, and despite getting the early kill, you cannot still win. 1v2 as Urgot, or at least, you know, not this easily in this point in the game, and so he just pays with his life. Yeah, we might see potentially a play going in the bot lane here. We are seeing Vilken move towards Lemon Cruz in the, in the minimap on the bottom right. We might see a bit of conflict happen there, but I think Vilken will actually be able to take that one if there is to be a fight. 
Well, both junglers getting a bit close, but Silsol also very low in the top lane. The junglers are starting to roam. Lemon Cruz is getting a bit low, but there's the incredible Silas Ultimate stealing Ash with Elbow getting taken very low. Ignite able to do it. Noxy picking up a kill. Sneezy and Lemon Cruz are able to get away with their lives as well. An absolutely incredible Ultimate. Really good reactions as well to put it onto the Ash and then straight onto the Brawl. Very well played from Lemon Cruz. Yeah, really well played from the entire bot lane, as well as the jungler of Eastern Wizards, once again getting themselves elite on that side of the map. However, this time around, the top lane isn't losing for them either, so already they're in a much healthier state than they were last time around this minute mark. Really got to see this proficiency once again be shown from those players, as now they're sitting on... Just two kills, that is subject to change, however, as 500 of a gold lead is now accumulated in their pocket. Yeah, you know, it's a good, it's a great start for the game for them. You know, are we expecting another game like last game, or do you think that, you know, SRG have a, a bigger chance than last game of staying in it? Because obviously, no, they went for this sort of early game-ish bully comp, and then it started to go wrong, and then at that point, it looked like there was no chance. But what do you think now? Yeah, it's a difficult question, and it's all going to depend on how well can Eastern Wizards play around Sneezy, because last time they played incredibly well around him. So if we recall his performance last game, this time around he's going to be playing Illusion, which means that he's going to be having a champion who can make a lot more stuff happen than just Kai'Sa this early on. Oh, now, but there we go. Still Souls are getting engaged on. It is going to get taken quite low. Is oh, There we go, my game's paused, but there's the hijack onto Still Souls. Still Souls is going to get taken down and ripped to shred by the change of Vermi. Yeah, so Vermi once again getting used on the second kill of the line in the bot lane. Easy, getting very low. It is going to be forced to flash away, but there's the flash after him. Sneezy's lost the stacks, but there's the Hecarim. And Sneezy's going to fall down. Noxy is going to have much of an escape. You mean not having the flash available can sometimes be a bit of a hindrance. And, you know, as I was talking about the bot lane of Zirkin getting those ultimate as soon as you get them you can just force the enemy bot lane to succumb to yourself because well you have so much cc you have so much lockdown and you have so much damage especially if wilkin gets that amazing flank like he has just done it was incredibly difficult for eastern wizards to try and run away there and so they just fell prey to an immaculate engage really yeah you know it was a really nice play for them and we are actually seeing as well, picking up, I think it was two plates, I believe. Hang on, let me have a look. Uh, two, almost two plates, actually, in the bot lane. is going to secure them a bit more damage, but here's the camp. They're in the bush. They're waiting. Oh, LML's shown a little bit. Uh, I don't think bit. anything's going to happen of that. They're going to walk away. But it looked like for a second there might have been a bit of a bloodbath in the bot lane once again. It was possible. I mean, clearly Wilkin loves playing around the bot lane. I mean, it makes sense. You want to be playing around the lane where you have the most setup. Right now, Vladimir is not that lane. And as I pointed out in the draft phase, trying to gank Koki is incredibly difficult because he can just skedaddle away with you having no impact on him whatsoever. Elbow jump. Same. Oh, there we go. Out. Yeah, Elbel getting the passive proc onto Sneezy, but Sneezy is able to use the E to get away. Elbel taking a bit of damage. They're probably in the favor of EW, even though not much happened. Vermil still trying to go for these engages. He's going in. There he is. The damage is ticking down onto Silsol. Silsol is going to be able to get some sort of a small heal. Uh, but the Grievous Runes is really taking its toll. Vermi, Vermi really kind of to just... He's, he's looking a bit aggressive and almost too aggressive sometimes. I mean, he does love to push, clearly, because he has the advantage, but he doesn't actually have that river warded. So oh, if it's Wilkins he's... jumping there, nothing is yeah. really going to happen. Just Oh, there. he's eating back in again. Still sold. Can he use the bait with the W? Nothing it's like really a horror it. movie, baby. You never know what he's going to do. I mean, it's true, but that's the ultimate, that's the flash, that's the play, but it's not going to be enough! Oh, no, so close! Wilkin is able to take out Vermi, though, in the top lane. Very nice play, able to get him out there. But there he goes, Sneezy and Noxy, maybe looking to go for a play with Lemon Cruz here. Yeah, that's what Vermi gets for not having that river warded. He did not see Wilkin coming, and as a result, he just fell prey to them. Lemon Cruz does get spotted out by a ward right now, so hey, the bot lane of Zirkin is going to stay pretty healthy and right now 
I think Zerkan is in a pretty good shape. They're in, a, in, in the lead right now. They have some kills in the bot lane. They have Faithful in a very healthy state. They have Wilkin also sitting on a couple of kills. So not too shabby of a start for either side. But I think that Eastern Wizards are going to start slowly being crippled by the fact that it's not Sneezy who has the kills, but rather, quote-unquote, just Vermi. <laughs> quote-unquote, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm not, not wrong, honestly. Um... But, you know, in the top lane, he's been playing it quite well. However, Wilkin has been all over the map this game. Oh, yeah. Lemon Cruz, not doing as well as he did on the Javan, but definitely not doing bad either. But Wilkin really pulling his weight, and, and a half, actually. Maybe a hit onto Faithful. The arrow is going to deal a decent amount of damage, but nothing's really going to come of that except another plate. Yeah, so the important thing is that um, Lemon Cruz actually does have a worse champion at trying to influence this game than he had last time around. Last time around, he was playing on a Jarvan, and the Eastern Wizards banned out Sejuani themselves. So he's kind of locked on a champion who cannot do as much in the early game. So we cannot be too surprised. However, Will can try. Well, here we are. Yeah, Vermi is actually going for me to play the top lane as well. Nothing really happening in the bot lane. I see a lot of these sort of engage back off the plays especially in the top lane but we are seeing the herald now being dropped into the bottom lane london cruz is making his way down something has to happen and there's the hijack onto the hecarim's ultimate bursting down welcome to start it off and there's yumi's ultimate as well onto elbel elbel's using glacial fish to try and survive elbel's gonna fall down like that because we kill and there's the double kill Sell soul and emotionless on the back line as well sneezy's gonna get hit by that aurelia ultimate and there we go, a lot of those damage you coming out of motion, picking able to sneeze. He's really low though, trying to flash away. Triple kill coming out from Legend Dead. Uh, Silsol is trying to live this one. He's gonna try and do a bit of damage. Legend Dead getting shut down, and there we go. Silsol is uh, there we go. Lemon Cruz taking out Silsol just at the end there. A massive fight in the bot lane, and actually in the favor of the Eastern Wizards. As RG Zerkin used everything that they had, they used the two TPs to get into the fray. In fact, it seemed that Emotionless and Silsol were going to be able to turn that fight around, but in fact, it was not enough. Eastern Wizards wiped the floor with SRG, and they just have to retaliate by trying to contest the Drake. Yeah, but here's the TP actually from Vermi this time. Bit of a bit of an early TP, but they are now gonna go for the Infernal Dragon, which is now evening up the dragons with two infernals as the exact same as last game, actually. Is it actually? Yeah, this well, this was this was the same situation they were in. Nice. Exact I mean, same. I actually forgot. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. Or well to our attention. USSR. Uh, regardless, now, Eastern <laughs> Wizards once again in the lead, sitting on three kills now on this Corky Legend and has been able to pick up that Triforce. And that is a terrifying state to be in if you're a Zircon player as well. Oh, but no! Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't even have time to cut you off that time. Yeah, he deals damage. That's Legend and that's Corky sitting on a Triforce. You have to be scared of this man, because he can just roam incredibly freely, but Hecarim is a top lane, Vermi doesn't know about him just yet. Yeah, but you know, he knows about him now, and Silsol actually is getting taken quite a lot of the Grievous Wounds taken his toll. Legend Dent is getting engaged on Emotionless, looking for a bit of damage, isn't going to commit to the fight that though, Vermi... Oh, he's he's a bit he's a bit stuck under the turret, but there's the hijack onto Elbel. Glacial Fish is going to be in their favor, but oh. double Glacial Figure actually going down. Lemon Cruz is going to survive that one. He's going to pick up the kill on the inside of Silso onto Vermi in the top lane and the kill in the bot lane onto Fateful for Lemon Cruz being able to pick up this tower now. Right now, Lemon Cruz is finally showing us his mechanical prowess on this Silas, just sitting in the bot lane, camping the living hell out of it once again, just giving Vermi the short end of the stick. They're going to be now barreling down the tier 2 turret in that bot lane, likely also just going to take it as the side of Wilkin and Silsol. They're just lane focusing a tier 1 turret, which at this point in the game is not a worthy trade, given that the Baron buff won't be spawning for 5 more minutes, and the Rift House has already been popped in the bot lane. Yeah, very, very true. That was a quite an early Rift Herald, though, and a kind of a preemptive one. I feel like he could have waited and saved it for a better opportunity. But, you know, mistakes were made, in my opinion, and now they're having to face the consequences of not having enough pushing power to maybe get that mid lane turret. Very possible. They're going to be facing Corky in the mid lane, so it's difficult to outpush that champion, particularly. So, 
to be difficult for them to do anything when it comes to just shoving waves out. What they can do is try and force plays. They still have Emotionless, who is pretty strong on this Aurelia. Triforce and Tiamat finished for himself as well. And you have the, enough lockdown to just try and, well, lock someone down from the side of Eastern Wizards. Just try and focus this Corky or Sneezy. As long as you manage to chain your CC properly, they should fall in a matter of sec seconds. Yeah, emotionless actually having above um 10 cs per minute right now not 11 but like you know 10 point whatever per minute and that's pretty damn good if you'd ask me i think you know keeping up with that that well with cs is something i've not even seen in, in pro games but here we go emotional taking a lot of damage vermi just absolutely destroying him the ergo is absolutely petrifying turret falling down the top lane for the side of eastern wizards which is seamlessly out of nowhere Vermi getting engaged on the bot lane but is using the e to get away but there's the double ultimate emotionless being able to pick up the kill onto vermi uh, so Vermi is definitely terrifying when it comes to pure 1v1 lemon cruise is jumping on top of this ash yeah all right and that's that's, all that's a flash, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's Silas on level one with what is it, three kills, four kills now, four zero on this Silas. It's a really wonderful performance from Lemon Cruise once again, despite him not having the biggest uh, impact in the early game. Eastern Wizards once again, it's mid game. Okay, you know what? That's just rude at this point. Yeah, that's just it's just all over. Two of them actually falling down, and it's just. You know, if they're being absolutely dominated left and right, I don't know what it was, but at one point, Zerkin had a decent you know, a decent spot in this game. It looked like they were definitely in lead. Even you said they were in the lead, but now Eastern Wizards just saying, okay, enough playing around. Let's finish this game. And now they are pushing down almost the inhib tower in the mid lane here. Yeah, I'm sure if it can be the game already for Eastern Wizards, it looks like they are just going to be happy with some chunk damage dealt to that mid lane inhibitor turret. Baron Buff still hasn't spawned, so Eastern Wizards just trying to get as much from this excursion into the enemy's zone of control as they can. And well, two more minutes on the clock. After that, it can be the game over if the side of Eastern Wizards manages to get themselves that Baron Buff, because there should be ideally no way that the side of Zerkin can actually hold off the amount of push that Eastern Wizards are going to have. Sure, you can have Faithful on wave clear duty, but you cannot contest the side lanes with Vermi as well as Legend in there. They're just too strong right now. So Zerkin, they cannot give up the next Baron, but it's going to be incredibly difficult to try and fight once again, given that they're just this far behind. Yeah, this dragon's actually going to be very important because if the side of Eastern Wizards get this Mountain Drake, they're going to burn through that Baron so fast. I'm not even sure if the side of Zerkin will be able to deal with it exactly. Oh yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right there because now Eastern Wizards have also a Corky, so generally you would be looking at an AD carry to be doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to just bursting the buffs and usual objectives down, but this time around, it's going to be the mid laner, it's going to be the Corky. No big surprises there. However, as you said, your worst fears have come true. Mountain Drake has been picked up for Eastern Wizards right now, so this Baron buff is just going to go down in a couple of seconds. No, oh, but Legend End kind of almost getting caught out there, but Zersol, sorry, oh, Silsol actually, sorry, getting a bit deep there, is going to be forced to flash away, but there we go, getting taken down by Noxie, and there we go, Emotionless jumping straight onto Sneezy, but Emotionless, oh, actually being able to pick up the kill and falling down at the same time, but now two members are down. Will Eastern Wizards be able to try and push out this inhibitor? You know, they don't have Emotionless. They don't have Sil Soul. That's where most of their damage is probably coming from at this point. You know, and, and right now it's really not looking good. But it looks like Eastern Wizards are going to make their way to this Baron. All right, so 15 seconds now laying on Emotionless. 10 seconds on Sil Soul. If the side of Zerkin can get at least a single ward into this Baron, they can try and contest it as soon as those big carries that you pointed out and respawn. I'm unsure if they're going to be contesting this as Verm as Legend is also TPing in. There's the TPing, and we are seeing Wilkin moving left and right with. But there we go. The oh, my game's froze. Okay, so. There is no real reason that right now Zerkin should be going for this fight. There is no play-by-play -play to be casting over this. There is just me. And I'm going to analyze it. Unfortunately, Zerkin, they kind of ran it down. Oh. And they just got aced. It's 
I come and straight back and everyone's dead. Honestly, I feel like there's a force that's telling me not to cast this game, you know? It's, um, it's like trying to shield you from danger right now, because that was just brutal. That was like pure gore what happened to Zerg in there. Eastern Wizards there now. Barreling down the enemy base. Once again, an immaculate game from them, I have to say. Perhaps they're going to back away and give at least some seconds of game to SRG Zirkin as they respawn. Yes, they're going to do that. Yay. Well, I mean, in that situation, they're playing it a bit safe there, which I, I respect, definitely. And they're actually, you know, they've got the Baron. They all get gold for that. They got the Ace. They all get gold for that. The lead's just increased to almost 10k now, and it's yeah. just... Yeah, it's revolting the amount of damage that we're about to see coming out from Eastern Wizards in this next fight. I, I can't wait to see it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be brutal. It's just going to be an absolute slaughter, we can likely expect, unless Faithful manages to hit the perfect dash arrow and the rest of Zirkin can follow up on it. You kind of have to hit Legend then to try and zone him away from a fight, but even if you do, you still have the Lucian, you still have the Silas, now, the oh, but there's the play. Sneezy actually getting blown up to start off the fight, and there's the disengage. Really nice, actually, from Zerkin here, being able to catch out Sneezy like that. Maybe some poor positioning on the side of EW, but, you know, maybe they're looking for more. Wilkin doesn't have that okay. much mana, and nor has HP. Lemon Crew's blowing him up, but he's, he's gonna, there's a the glacial fish. It also used Lemon oh Crew to die with a massive burst of damage, but we are seeing, you know, Vermi pushing out this bot lane. If this continues, that he might actually be able to pick up this inhibitor. So right now, Motionless really is going to start heading back to the base, but it's probably not going to be fast enough. He has the mountain, he has the Baron, he's uh, he's Urgot, and uh, he might not actually be able to get it. He's got a second wave coming in. No, nope, that's a double control one. Well. That's the result of the matter, as now Urgot is still barreling down the enemy's base. Vladimir gets caught out, though. Oh, Silsol Sil might be able to live this one. The slow's coming out. Fermi, just in the middle of three of them, just you know, pushing out some damage, almost, is able to distract them, get the turret very low. Silsol also able to fall down, even trade actually across that there. And, you know, we're seeing more minions starting to barrel it down the mid lane. We're also, the bot tower's gotten quite low. I think right now, EW's trying to secure this lead. Should definitely be looking where they are now, this top lane, to try and force down this tower to make so much pressure onto the base that I'm not sure Zerkin will be able to deal with it at that point. Yeah, however, once again, Zerkin, they're trying to boast as much of a defensive line as they can, and they're doing it surprisingly well. Wilkin went with a great engage there in the mid lane, killed Sneezy immediately. That is one big carry of Eastern Wizards down, and you can try and defend your base from that point on. Lemon Cruise has stolen the Hecarim. Lemon Cruise stolen the Hecarim, but Wilkin jumping into a bad fight there. Legend dead, blowing him up instantly. Emotionless is going to get a bit low. You know, I was getting gunned down, but is probably going to be able to get out there. But there's the stun to Legend dead. Legend dead is actually all the emotionless who's falling down to Sneezy. Legend dead falling out soon after. Lemon Cruise now also there still has the Hecarim of Ultima available from the hijack. Might look for a play around the back. There's only two of them actually there. What's no. going to happen here? So the question, they can Ooh, definitely then. dive. Lemon Cruise has the damage right now, but it seems that Zirkan are going to be able to wave clear. Urgot is trying to come by, as you can see on the minimap. Yeah, but the it's not there as well. It's not going to happen, clearly, as Ash is way too far behind to try and slow the pursue down. Oh, but there we go, jumping straight over the wall onto oh, Lemon okay. Cruise, and there's the ultimate a burst amount of damage element. Bell falling down, a flash from Silsol to try and get away, a very, very poor plant in my opinion, and this put them into a bad position for this game now. I'm actually not sure if they had vision of that brush, I think they did, but they just didn't expect Sneezy to be at there, given that he did almost get bursted down before. Well, he has Yumi, he can heal up very easily, and as a result, they just dashed into, or what was it, three or four people, and they died as a result. Unfortunate of a situation for them. Yeah, and now they're actually going to be able to go for this Baron Eastern Wizards. Not the Baron, sorry, this Dragon. Sorry, mispronounced that for a second. When Dragon's not really going to do much, but it is going to allow them to stay out in these fights for just that little bit longer. You know, they go for these trades, they go for these perks a little bit longer, which, you know, for Zerk and every single Dragon just means worse. A Mountain Drake means it can push faster. 
you know, a cloud drake means they can move fa like move around to the turrets faster, provide more pressure. Just all these dragons right now are bad for the side of Zerk, and like they usually are, but now just even more amplified because of this uh, the given situation. And right now, the side of Zerkin are trying to move into the Baron pit, trying to secure some vision around it as well. It's going to be spawning in less than a minute. Ash Arrow does connect, I believe. And Zerkin, they're trying to barrel down this mid lane turret, unimpeded by Eastern Wizards. Oh, but there we go. You know, we're seeing we're seeing Wilkin getting very low again, falling down with a GA available. Though Lemon Cruz jumping onto Elabel, and there's maybe a little bit of damage. It might not be enough, but here we go. Here's a massive play. Everything's happening. I'm not enough is able to fill up my screen. The last one left being faithful though, and it probably won't be enough. And it looks like the side of the Eastern Wizards might actually try to close out this game here. They definitely might. Oh, faithful is there. We oh, Zermi, is he going to get the kill? Please. Is it gonna happen? It's so close! Oh, no. and there's the ace! And the Baron actually, instead of going for the inhibitor, they have gone for the Baron instead. You got respectable play, definitely respectable, even more pressure. They've what they've got another the ace now, but I've got even more gold, but is it getting to the point now where it's hitting you know it's starting to hit that late game? Vladimir is starting to absolutely blow people up. Do you think? that Zerkin might have a very good chance, even with the second Baron falling down. I'm very unsure because of that Baron buff right now. It seems well, like when Vermi is going to get caught out a little bit, that is taken down with general speed, but as you were saying. Yeah, as I was saying, I do not precisely think that Zerkin are in a happy enough of a spot to just withstand the amount of Eastern Wizards members barreling down their base. If they manage to, however, hold on somehow for 10 more minutes, I do believe that it can be Faithful trying to take this game over. The problem is he hasn't finished Triforce at 28 minutes because he was forced to go into the Executioner's Calling. So it's a very unfortunate of a scenario. And right now, what the side of Zerka needs to do is just try and clear these waves out. You have the Ash and... You can try and clear those ways out. Give yourself a time to scale. Do not be going for these fights. If you see a pick, then try and go for it. Try and take as much of this Baron buff away from the enemy member and just try to scale. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely not wrong. They, they are just trying to scale at this point, I think. You, they are doing what you're saying, and it's working out for them, actually, because how well they defend against that last Baron gives me a lot of hope for Zerka right now. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. But um, I think the amount of damage that Corky's doing, if Yumi can keep this Corky alive, it's just going to be the end. I mean, yeah, but the thing is, right, and you would be giving the benefit of the doubt to Zircon, because if they can pull these big engages and big plays, if they can try and kind of ass assassinate one of the bigger, powerful members of Eastern Wizards, that they could win the fight. Well, now Corky has a Guardian Angel. <laughs> that is going to make things tremendously more difficult. Silas also has a stopwatch, and so the only member who doesn't have a defensive item is that Lucian. So you're going to be focusing on him in those team fights, and Corky definitely starts to take over at this point. Three items on this champion. The situation is looking dire for Zerkin. Yeah, definitely. The hijack is actually able um, to as well steal the Ash Arrow, which might be a really good start for the fight. There we go, straight onto a motionless, and the, the Hecarim Ult trying to get away from that as well. Everyone getting really low. The side of Eastern Wizards, oh, the suck from Vermi, able to kill him with chains and a motionless falling down on the side there as well. And there's the inhibitor, and it looks like Eastern Wizards are going to try and close out this game here. We have the Super Minions coming down from the mid lane. This could be the end of the series. It could be it for the side of Zerka. They have really have to try and go in on this one now, but there's not much they can do. And it looks like the Nexus is going to fall down, and Eastern Wizards are going to take this game with a massive 2-0 hard victory. A hard victory. Victory, I'll say that's a pretty hard victory. I mean, yeah, they pretty much snowballed perfectly. They knew what they had to do. They knew their win conditions in the first one. It was try and either survive or just snowball sneezy. Uh, in the second one, it was start, try and snowball sneezy. And they didn't do that. They actually snowboarded Legend in. So, hey, that worked out for them pretty fine. So, in result, Eastern Wizards went for a very clean snowball. However, in the second game, 
there were moments when I was thinking that perhaps Zerkin were going to turn it around with the amount of engage that they had. Eastern Wizards definitely stepped out of line a couple of times, but it just wasn't enough for Serenity Gaming as they just got wiped and cleanly flushed in the toilet. That was unfortunate. I mean, better luck next time. <laughs> yeah, I bet definitely better luck next time. However, that was an incredible game and an incredible start. Well, for both of these teams, you know, we, sh we saw a lot of potential from both, but especially Eastern Wizards taking a really nice, sound victory. But that is going to close it off for us, I believe. Uh, it should be. Of course, this is just the first game of many that are going to be happening on this stream. As far as I know, tomorrow there should be also another stream happening. At the same time, I'm sure if that is actually going to be the case, make sure to... Kind of tune in, join our Discord on Serenity Gaming if you want to know more, and also Twitter, although that account is almost dead, <laughs> I think. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just not active, but hey. It, you know, in case, in case it is active, please follow us there. Yeah, thumbs up, please. No? Yeah, okay. I, think, I think that's going to bring it out for us. Thank you very, very much for tuning in, and, you know, make sure to tune in for tomorrow's stream, like Karim said, and I hope to see you all there next time. Yeah, have a good night, everyone.